Welcome to the next phase of my YouTube channel where I can actually show the process of me painting. Um, so in this video, I'm going to be doing two painting sketches. This first one is a value sketch, and then the second one is going to be a color sketch. Both I have found really helpful to get this idea of a painting out so I can invest um, time into what I'm my composition before I um, invest all the time into my, my big one and make sure everything is how it should be um, color wise, value wise, drawing wise, compositionally. Um, so this will just be like quick sketches for me to, to see the idea that I want to do really simply. Um, I'm still getting everything set up in my studio and trying to get the flow down. <laughs> um, in about a minute, you're going to see the board fall over <laughs> and um, spill a glass jar of turpentine all over my studio. I have like this, um, my easel, I can't lift the, the easel up to the height that I want because of the ceiling gets in the way. So I have stretcher bars on the ledge of the easel and then this board on the stretcher bars and it's not that secure. And then on the ledge of my easel, I also have the jar of turpentine that I've been dipping my brush into and of course the jar of turpentine is glass and breakable <laughs> so I thought I'd slow put it down to normal speed because I think it's funny just watching the real life errors that happen Okay, <clears throat> so then my studio then is filled with turpentine and there's broken glass everywhere. So that took a while to clean up and move everything out of the way so I could get it all cleaned up. And I ended up taking my lunch break right now so that I opened the door and the windows so all the turpentine fumes could get out of my studio before I went back in there to work. <laughs> so um, yeah, I taped everything up and used clamps so that it's more secure and won't fall off. Everything is a work in progress with the new studio figuring out what works and what doesn't work. Um, so I, sw I was using turpentine as something to thin the paint and I'm using ivory black and flake white and that's it, just a really easy black and white painting for this value sketch. But then after the, the turpentine spilled, um, I ended up switching to a little jar that I have of linseed oil instead, just because the room is already, I just didn't want to work, work with any more fumes since they already spilled out. So I switched over to the, the linseed oil, which I actually prefer using now. So I guess that was a happy accident that the, the turpentine jar broke. <laughs> um, it's, I, I like how the paint moves better. Um, I, when I'm using the turpentine, I can really feel it uh, almost having a gritty feeling. Sometimes it's, it's really breaking up the quality of the paint. I also don't like how the turpentine, I don't like how it smells or, I mean, it's, it's necessary when I'm doing a longer painting, I will start off with turpentine sometimes so I can be obeying the fat over lean principle. But with this color sketch, it doesn't, I mean, it's just a one shot thing. So there's not going to be layers or anything. So I think using the linseed oil for the color sketch is just fine. So 
Um, the, the scrap of canvas that I, I had was um, not cut square, so I drawing in the box, I didn't take it right out to the edges, but I ended up around the box just painting it black just so I didn't have that distracting white edge around the whole piece. Though for the, the painting, the actual painting, it's the, um, the box is going to be right up to the edge of the canvas. So this idea for this painting, uh, I really like that really nice intense, dramatic, romanticized light. So um, that's why I'm testing testing this out with the value sketch. I want to make sure that um, I can really get the all the focus to be on those white parts of the mask. This Venetian mask that I have that's really, really beautiful. And I've been wanting to paint it for a long time. So um, setting it up in the in this crate that I have, just stuck it in the crate and then there's um, flowers that's going to be all around the mask that I haven't really sketched in yet that these these dried flowers that the mask is resting on so I want to make sure that there's like a really nice flow in in values um, I'm also really aware of having this be like this box painting where I have this crate and I'm sticking things in this crate, like the mask and the flowers. I wanna avoid having the, I think it could be really easy for the, the composition to have these really strong diagonal lines from um, the diagonal corners of the box and kind of making it look like an X over the, the whole piece compositionally. So I really want to avoid that because I think that will be kind of distracting and not um, something, I think it would look better if it didn't have like really strong diagonal lines um, from corner to corner. So I'm trying to see how I can um, avoid that in the, not just with lines in the painting, but also in the value structure. So um, I'm, I'm focusing on that as well and um, right now I can see that there are like from the top left corner to the top right bottom corner you can kind of see that that is um, you can there's kind of like a strong diagonal there so as I'm keep on painting and working on this um, with the flowers and, and such I'm kind of like messing around with how I'm arranging the flowers in the box and then how that's looking value-wise when I paint that in so I can um, try and avoid that really strong diagonal. Also, it's interesting watching myself paint. This is sped up and not the real time version, but um, just seeing how I'm laying down brush strokes and how there's cool things that I'm seeing that I'm doing and also things that I might wanna change next time when I'm painting, which I don't think I would be aware if I wasn't watching myself doing that, which is kind of interesting. Um, I'm also, I also find this really helpful doing this value sketch with the Venetian mask has um, all this really, really beautiful, intricate design work around. There's the white part of the mask, which is around the eyes and the mouth area. And then um, it's covered then in this intricate design work. And um, it's a little bit darker value around it. And I want to um, make sure that parts of that value-wise are going to like really sink in to the background and get darker but then also um it doesn't too like a stark of a contrast either from the white part of the mask to the intricate work because it's kind of a balance i like that um i, I really like the dramatic light where you have a strong light source and then a lot of a lot of darks in the painting as well where most of the painting might be considered dark but I'm also not so much a fan of really hard 
sharp edges created by like really high contrasts. Um, I like things to be a little bit more softer because I think you can get a more um, luminous quality when you do that. So I'm also kind of exploring that with this. And we're get, having this new, um, moving to California and getting this new studio set up, I feel like there's been a lot of uh, waiting, <laughs> I guess, to do things. Like, um, I've, I had this idea for this painting, and I really wanted to use flowers in it, real flowers, and I wanted them to wilt. So kind of waiting for them to wilt and then get stiff. So I know when I'm using um, them in the crate that they're not going to, once I start the painting, they'll be um, kind of stiff and dried up nicely so they won't move around too much and the composition of lines that I've set them up won't um, change around too much. So they're like that now so um, I could start playing around more with, with this painting idea that I really wanted to do. So now even though it's a value sketch, like with the 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 lines of the flowers that are under the mask, I'm trying to create lines that kind of um, loop around the mask in a way. So um, it kind of avoids the strong diagonal that I want to get away from. And I'm also kind of playing around with how much I can push uh, the, the, the lights in the flowers from the, the stems and the petals without detracting away from the really strong light of the mask and the same thing too with the wood on the side it seems like the brightest thing in this in the painting is the obviously the mask and the the white part of the mask but um also where the light is hitting the edge of the crate to the to the left and it's not it's not as bright as bright as the mask but i like that there's kind of light hitting it there too so it's um, not so much of a bullseye perhaps in the center of the painting being the, the lightest part, but there's other areas that can direct your eye around. And I'm, um, there's these sorority crystals on the mask too, and I'm kind of also dabbing in and what I can get away with impasto wise to create that really strong light when light hits crystal. Okay, moving on to my color sketch now. So instead of using turpentine, since I liked using the linseed oil so much, that's what I'm using now. So I have turpentine, or not turpentine, I have linseed oil for my medium. And the colors that are on my palette is flake white, yellow ochre, cadmium red light, alizarin crimson, cobalt blue, and then ivory black. So one of the big reasons why I wanted to do this color sketch is the flowers that are in this painting are purple, a really dark, intense purple color that I've never painted before. And I still want to be using my uh, limited color palette. So I wanted to just experiment with that. There's also some green that's in the, the stems of the flowers too. And um, I'm wanting to do that with my limited color palette as well. But as I'm doing this, I'm also seeing that at the end of this color sketch that maybe the the really dark parts of the greens um, might, I might want to get them like a more intense dark color. And I don't know if I want to use a green or maybe the yellow ochre is just, um, I can't get the intense darkness with the yellow ochre. Maybe I, I want to use cadmium yellow, really just like a tad bit in that area. So I want to explore more with that. So the color that I'm using now, it looks like 
raw umber, but I've mixed black, yellow ochre, and the cadmium red light to get this, this color. I kind of like to make my own brown or raw umber color, even though it kind of looks like <laughs> one just straight out of the tube. But I really like to be able to adjust the browns that I do. So I like to mix, mix my own. And starting with the, um, the darks, and I'm going to work my way from the darks then into the light. And then so the same thing with this, the, the piece of canvas. The next time I'll just cut the canvas so the edges will be nice and straight. But um, the box that, or the crepe box, whatever, <laughs> that the, um, the mask and stuff, and that edge is going to go straight to the, the edge of my canvas for the actual painting. So... When I made my first, the first value sketch, I watched a little bit of myself painting and was seeing how I'm putting down paint strokes. And when I paint, I feel like I'm painting very um, purposefully and directful. But watching myself, I was seeing that it looked like I could um, work on my brush strokes and kind of think about what kind of brush stroke I want to put down before I put it. So watching kind of adjusting and then watching myself on this video. I feel like I'm doing that more now. So it's just interesting to watch myself paint. <laughs> and then also you can kind of see that the camera will start, will shake every now and then. And it's, it's when I take steps in my studio, it shakes the camera. <laughs> it's like I'm it's like I'm Godzilla or a monster or something. Like I'm shaking the whole apartment, walking back and forth from my easel to my viewing spot. <laughs> so this is all a work in progress. Um, I just wanted to just start painting as soon as possible, but there's definitely stuff that I want to be adjusting in my studio more. So maybe I can figure out a way to get the camera, which is, I'm just shooting from my cell phone, um, a way that I can get it maybe off the floor so it doesn't shake so much. Also with doing this color sketch, I'm seeing also with, I looked at my, I had mixed up my colors for it, looking at it. And, um, I had different colors for a different brown for the, um, for the crate and then a different brownish color for the, the mask and, um, and then a different color for this, the stems as well. And they, of the, the stems of the flowers. And I was surprised when it looked different on my palette, but then as I was applying it, to um, the painting, the colors, they seem pretty similar. Like I could be using the same colors for the crepe and the, the mask. So I'm gonna think about that while I'm painting because um, I, I definitely wanna show some differences and I think there'll be differences in, in temperature from the crate and then what's on the mask as well. But if I can make things as simple as possible, color wise. So I don't want the color, I want the color to really work for this painting and not be distracting. So I think that's something to think about too with my, with my mixtures where, um, I guess to have a more unified quality where I can be putting some mixtures that are on the mask than on the, the wood and then things that are on the wood and create on the mask too. So it's, um, since they are so similar, so they also have that like nice unified quality as well. And also for this, I'm I'm really more focusing on the color of things rather than the drawing so much because I'm looking at this uh, color study now. I, the mask, I think I made it too too big and it's a little bit too centered in the um, in the crate, and it's not actually like that because I am seeing that really strong diagonal then from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. 
Um, after I did this color sketch, I ended up um, moving some of the flowers more and I added some more in. So right now you can see the top of the mask and the purple flowers that are to the, to the left of it. They're kind of at a really similar height. And so after this, I ended up taking more flowers and sticking them, <clears throat> sticking them back behind the mask a little bit so they get taller than the mask and they kind of, um, they kind of loop around the, the left and start pointing more towards the right. So it kind of is um, circling it more. So it has kind of a, you know, like getting away from like the, those like strong diagonal X marks that you could see in it. Um, so it, it kind of has like a more um, maybe like organic round feeling rather than like strict, hard geometrical um, compositional lines in it. And so I did that and then I just made a, a really fast charcoal drawing and I really like how that looks. So definitely doing the value sketch and this color sketch and then that um, charcoal sketch then has been really helpful. So I feel like I'm all set up now that I can start the, the actual, the actual painting. And then also, I also added some flowers too. So the, the right part of the painting where it's got all those, that dark shadow, I have some flowers that are kind of poking out. So it's kind of got, that are, it's catching a little bit of light. So you've got um, a lot of depth there where it's like that shadowy atmospheric look where it goes behind the mask, but then there's these two flowers that um, they're really small and they kind of poke out and catch the light. So you've got um, just more interesting, interesting space, I think, that I was able to create there. but I'm really excited to, to work on the full painting of this. I've got the canvas bars all, um, or I got the canvas stretched now. So everything's ready to, to go on it. I like that the, the idea of this could be that it's a performer that's done either performing forever or maybe like just this, whatever this was that she was doing with this mask and that flower she got after her last performance, she just, packed up the mask in a crate with those flowers. And I like also when, with using a limited palette that you can get that really nice um, um, color in a painting that's really unified with using a limited palette, even though that there is that strong purple in the greens. Um, I think it's, I think it looks really beautiful. All these colors that you can make with um, very, very few colors out of the tube. Yeah, for this last part of it, I I thought I was I was done, and I um, was walking around outside and out of the studio, and then I came back in and saw um, that there's actually a lot of purple that's really similar to the flowers that's in like the deep shadow part to the mask. So I started to add those in, and I really like really like how that looks, getting some more of that like deep purple in the mask. All right, so these are my two color sketches. 
or color sketch and value sketch. Thanks for watching and happy painting.